Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Thursday, June 1st, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember everyone that you can have a good your day. Your cake with your ice cream. I, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I have no idea anymore. Like, I was like, you can have uh, something. I don't know. Um... Yeah, so... You're uh, a fucking grown adult, you can have whatever the hell you want. Y what he said, I think. I don't know, my camera's too You just high. gotta reach out and get it, you know? Just grab but, it. But, you know, no, 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 Not that far. You should probably ask first. Well, what I was going to Go ask... proper procedures. I was going to ask if you all <laughs> would support us on Patreon. <laughs> Give us some money each month, whether it's 50 cents, a dollar, five dollars, ten, or twenty-five, or however much you are willing to lend to us each month. And in return, we'll keep bringing you this show, patreon.com slash daily internet. Yeah. Nathan, how are you today? What's up, man? Uh, I mean, not much. It's been, uh, it's been a pretty good day. Yeah? Yeah. Um... There is cake. I didn't get to eat any of it, but I got to smell it, and that was, that was the benefit of today. Were you allergic to it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, was it coconut cake I, or I, something? It was this, like, this fucking, it was like a vanilla cake, but with chocolate frosting, and then there was, like, some dope-ass sprinkles. It was, it was because it was simultaneously Tina and Lester's birthday. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and they're both in records, so they were just like, yeah, let's get this giant-ass cake. It's gonna be fucking the greatest. Because cake. Uh, yeah, and it's, <laughs> they were right. I got to smell it, though, so, you know, that was a plus. Did it make you feel better? Uh, I mean, it it was like I was fiending for it, so I mean, like, whatever. I'm just jonesing, man. Yeah, I guess. The, also, like, that guy that I really like on, on YouTube who does these weird-ass fucking things with instruments, he plays the theremin and everything. Yeah, are you about to ruin your um, thing of the day? Yeah, no, I'm not going to make that my thing of the day. I'm no. just going to say it now. Fucking, he did a, a cover of The Trooper by Iron Maiden with a banjo, and it was fucking sick, and there's a Bella Leica in the video and everything. And it was so good. Awesome. awesome. And watch, when I get to the thing of the day, I'm not going to remember what I thought, and now I'm going to be like, oh, fuck, I don't have a thing of the day. That's all right. I don't even have one right now, so... Oh, okay. Don't, don't Probably feel... Probably going to be this Magikarp jump game. <laughs> like, holy fuck. And I also realized I don't have a number 11 button on my board here so uh we're just going wait to... we have an 11th one today yeah we do fucking my goddamn wisdom is so low because my passive perception sucks dick <laughs> um we will go with the fuck sh this one the fuck oh, shit. shit damn it all right <laughs> no i don't have that one anymore it's gone what okay oh shit oh How's that? All right, anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, that one's pretty good for this situation. Don't put ground wasp nest on your vagina to tighten muscles, warns a gynecologist. Mm, this is submitted by D.N. Jowen to R. Not the Onion. You, uh, oh, what? You, you know those things that just, just sound like a bad idea? Yes. Yeah, this is one of those. This is oh, shit. <laughs> God damn it. You I make just, me I sad. was looking... I was looking through the um the lock the the notes for today, and my thing of the day is n number eight. Mm. Sucks to suck then. Yeah, now I have to go find a new one. Thanks, dickhead. Either way, so this isn't actual wasp nest themselves. It is the original growth of a wasp nest when wasps are going to start building a nest on a tree because the wasp will lay an egg in a bulb of a tree and then it'll grow into this like kind of like a growth on the tree and people are cutting those off, grinding them up, turning them into paste and slathering them all over their lady parts. And the reason behind it that has no scientific backing whatsoever is that'll help tighten the muscles. So, you know, you got real, real, a real nice tight vag there. Also is supposed to help, help it with odor. Instead, what it is doing is drying out the vagina, which is causing large problems for sex and is also leading to a, uh, it also is, instead of what they claim of it will inhibit HIV, it is actually helping it grow. Oh my god. Yeah. So uh, don't rub ground wasp's nest on your vajayjay. -jay. Oh my god. Actually, you know what? Don't rub most things on your vajayjay. -jay. It's a very sensitive area. 
Well, okay, so I guess most things is appropriate, but let's not be hasty here. I'm listening. I, I <sighs> Just careful with your words, sir. You just have to be careful about what you do research about what you're putting on your JJ. Um, sure. Even if it's completely stupid. It's like coconut oil. Look it up anyways. Well, I mean, wait, like, are you saying not to use... How would you know, Michael? No, Thanks no. Thanks for Kirsten. No, wait, what? How would I know? What are we talking about? I'm confused. No, are you are you against coconut oil would... because... Because oh, no, no. Of... I, okay, okay. So maybe coconut oil was was awful because I had I have a very negative uh, opinion of coconut oil, and um, if I had a JJ and I had spread it on it, then yes, that would be the worst. Yeah, it would be the worst. I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm pretty sure coconut oil is okay for people that aren't allergic to coconut, though. As someone who at one point in their life only had body soap that had cocomite propyl in it, having an allergic reaction to something in a very sensitive area, is the literal worst. I I believe you. I, anyway. I, don't, I don't know where else to go with this. Like, neither of us are women. I just don't want you rubbing weird shit on... Even dudes don't rub ground wasp nest on your junk, okay? It's probably not a good idea. Actually, if, if we let the stupid... I'm done with you. you. I'm moving Ten. on. The army is eyeing a personal hoverboard that can reach 10,000 feet. How does this top wasp nests? Um, <laughs> this is submitted by Zone Ranger MC to our gadgets. Because hoverboards, dude. Real ones. Not those stupid ones with the little wheels on them that you roll around on? No, 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 no. Or like the ones that use magnets. This one uses, it, essentially you have a very small helicopter tied to your feet. It's like a, a friggin' instead of like a quadcopter, it's got a whole bunch of those little fans that spin super fast. It can get you up to 10,000 feet and can go up to 93 miles per hour. Okay. And it is uh, not for sale right now because the army called first dibs. I really want them. I want to race them. That sounds awesome. That sounds like a good way to die. Yeah, a great way to die. Like, that that just sounds like death. But, I mean, you know, good for you. Yeah, no, these are fucking... That, I, I can't wait for these to be public use. <laughs> Jennifer in the chat room says that she has this on while she's in the locker room changing before practice, and one of their friends walked in and it was super confused. Well, I believe it, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make me. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I um I need to just keep keep rolling. I guess hoverboards though, hoverboards, right? Awesome. No, this is gonna be fucking great. However, I'm I'm gonna be that guy. I want there to be like extravagant kind of hover devices. I really want a magic carpet. I mean, with this. If you do it right, you could, like, maybe make it look Simultaneously, like Simultaneously, I want a magic carpet with a magic carpet pet. But if you do it right, this could look like a magic carpet. But now I need a magic carpet pet. I'm, well, you're gonna have to try a lot harder on that one. Genetically alter koi fish to get magic carp tendencies, and then we need to genetically engineer them so that they have a transformation into, like, this weird dragon. That isn't actually a dragon, and even when it mega evolves, it does, isn't a dragon. It turns into a giant shrimp. Nine. Senator asks Comey to investigate Attorney General Jeff Sessions for possible perjury. Oh shit! Press the button. Mm. The the oh, oh shit, shit button. Oh, shit. There you go. This was submitted by RK119 to our politics. Um, also, just in there as well, um, the Attorney General Jeff Sessions can be impeached if he is found guilty of perjury. Yeah. That was submitted by... Hello? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I didn't realize that there was another fucking, um, another title bit to this. <laughs> I thought we only did that on, like, the, the number one one. This was also submitted by Vaquero Vic, Pescador to Our Politics. I do it if there are multiple sources, is, is all. That's, that's fair. No, no, it's completely fair. The, today is a day of that, I notice, as I continue down the list. But yeah, normally, like... I didn't expect it. I just I was That's thrown okay. off guard. That's I was okay. looking at chat. I was laughing at 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 Jennifer and, and Nicole, and it was great. 
Either way, so this is not to say that he has committed perjury. Now, there is a belief that he could have possibly done so based on the way that he's been talking and just in because he said he had no connection to Russia throughout the entire Trump campaign, which he was associated with. Then it came out that he did have a conversation with uh, Ambassador Kislyak, if that's true. And if he did have this conversation, then he technically lied under oath. Blah, 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 blah. Attorney General Jeff Sessions could be removed from office for it. There is also the question to be posed about of how he recused himself from things like the Hillary Clinton email scandal as well as the Russia investigation and then cited those as reasons to remove James Comey from office. All of these things have been requested to be investigated. But the weird thing is that they asked Comey to investigate it and he's not on the FBI anymore. Oh, shit. What? That didn't connect at first. So they're, they're having him come in as like a... A separate party? Well, they, they've they just kind of sent letters to anyone that might listen. Oh. Like, okay. they, they, they've, they've sent three letters. They they Originally, they were sent to James Comey because they were sent to him before he was removed. Um, but they've now been sent to acting director uh, Andrew McCabe. McCabe? Don't know. Um, those letters were dated March 20th, it's April 28th, and May 12th, asking for an investigation into Jeff Sessions. That's fucking exciting, though. I, I want to see how this plays out. I really want this investigation. Well, even if it wastes taxpayers' money, I don't care. I feel better if, if uh, that is even investigated in the first place. Sure. And, like, th basically, there's already what you need to look at. Mostly just what needs to be investigated is look at what he said, what has been said, what was under oath, and compare that to what has happened and if there is anything actually at fault there. Right, if there's discrepancies. Like, it might not even be on the FBI to investigate this. Like, this is a, a pretty basic legal matter. That's just the FBI is supposed to be the neutral party that could investigate it. So, it just needs to be basically reviewed to see if it was constitutional or not to do what he did. Hmm. Yeah, no, I... I hope this that... I hope that some of the, somebody listens and orders this to follow through with it. Like, I really want to see where this goes. Well, and if it is true, then he can be removed from office. If he right. ends up being removed from office is another thing. And also, like, I don't like Jeff Sessions. But at the same time, when you are a, a big politician and talking to a lot of people and a very active person in world politics, you end up talking to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Now, reportedly... He, he had said he had had two uh, conversations with Ambassador Kislyak before the campaign, right? Right. Th that was all understood. Now, the reason that people are up in arms is because it appears that he has had a third conversation that was during the campaign. We don't know what that conversation was. We don't know what it was about. Also, like, it could have, f for all intents and purposes, Ambassador Kislyak could have called him and was like, hey, I'm in town. Do you want to get dinner? And he was like, sorry, can't. That could literally be a conversation. Just because he was talking to Ambassador Kislyak doesn't mean that he was doing anything nefarious. Right. So he said he didn't have it. But at the same time, I I, I, full, I will give him the, the benefit of the doubt of like, if it was a subpar, just off the cuff conversation like that, I might not remember that I had it. I, that's, yeah, completely understandable. Like, it happens at work. People are like, hey, did such and such call last week? And I'm like, fuck, that was last week. I don't know. That happens a lot, especially if you drink a lot. I don't drink a lot, but... That makes one of us. At, where's your gin and tonic, buddy? It's right here. Is there ice in it? Yeah. Keeps that shit cool. Waters it down a little bit, but, you know, Whatever. Whatever. Keeps you hydrated. Exactly. All right, and what was going to be Nathan's thing of the day, but is no longer because it was in the, the news today. Ha <laughs> ha! Piece of shit. New J.R.R. Tolkien book will be published after a hundred years. This was submitted by JB12345 to our books. Are you all right? I'm so excited. 
So Christopher Tolkien, who is J.R.R. Tolkien's son, is going to be has approved the publication of a book called Baron and Luthien, and it is a book that is about the story of a mortal human and an immortal elf that are trying to deal with the whole I, I we love each other, but one of us will die because I'm mortal. And then they're going to go on and try to steal some things from one of the ultimate evils in the world, Melkor. Blah 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 blah. New Tolkien books coming out. It's also going to be illustrated illustrated by Alan Lee, who helped illustrate the original Lord of the Rings books, as well as received an Academy Award for uh, the his work on Peter Jackson's film adaptations. So yeah, new more Tolkien, even though I've not read any of it. That, that's really depressing. That I haven't read any of it. Yeah. Okay. So one of my favorite memories as a kid is constantly driving in uh, in and out of of uh, Anchorage to Palmer. And during that time, I'd get bored. So my dad thought it was a good idea, and he bought me uh, The Hobbit on on CD. And so I'd pop it into my little um, CD player, and I'd put on my little shitty wire headphones with the fucking big poofy ear things that oh, I God, hated. Oh, God, they were itchy. Hate, they were terrible. I hate the fucking feeling of all of that. I hate, can't stand Styro. Anyways, but I'd, I'd be popping those on, and I'd just listen to, to The Hobbit over and over again. Yeah. It was good. Was it good? Yeah, and then eventually I read uh, The Lord of the Rings. I actually have them in my box over there. I think I'm going to pull them out and read them again. I totally did a book report on The Hobbit when I was in like 7th or 8th grade, and I didn't read the book. Instead, I read the first paragraph and last paragraph of each chapter and then got an A on that report. I that's if you, I, I mean, maybe that's that's how the, the thing... I don't know. What grade were you in? 7th or 8th. That's pretty cool. I used to slack off mad hardcore in 8th grade, and then I slacked off like crazy until 10th grade when I almost got kicked out of school. But 10th uh, grade was also the year I got to uh, teach a class on on Frankenstein's monster, I being, a, being about alchemy. slacked off really hard in 1st grade, and then... That's... that. <laughs> Alright, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> did Keep going. Did really good until 10th grade and then gave no fucks until I graduated. None. Not a single fuck was given anymore whatsoever. See, I, I really cared up until about end of 7th grade and then 8th grade I was like, whatever, dude. And then 9th grade I was like, dude, this kind of blows, but I can understand needing to do stuff. And then 10th grade I was like, I'm doing all right. And then my friend almost got us kicked out of school. Um... So I had to play a lot of catch up because I was like suspended for ninety days. You got suspended for ninety days. Yeah, and it was possible expulsion. Jesus, like I I got suspended like seven times, and the maximum each time was a week. Like, but ninety days. What the fuck did you do? I didn't do anything. Fuck you. It, I my crime was being the best friend of this other guy. Oh, you were an accessory. I get it. Yep, I was an accessory to an act. All right. Seven. Republican congressman says God will take care of climate change. I'm going to cry. Oh, why is this real? Ah! Oh, this hurts worse than my kidney stone. Uh huh. This was also submitted by Melissa Likes You to R Not The Onion. Michigan Republic, uh, Representative Tim Wahlberg said during a town hall meeting in Coldwater, Michigan on Friday that he believes that climate change is real, but it is not something for humans to solve. Um, he does believe that man has had an impact on the environment and that we are somewhat the cause, but that man cannot fix it and cannot change the universe, his words, and that he believes that if it does become a real issue, that God will take care of it. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this one better? You make me sad. Yeah, that one's better. Yeah, that one's a lot better. Or how about this? Fuck no. That one good too? I like the you make me sad thing. You make me sad. Yeah, it's true. Um, that one. Oh, God. This hurts. Oh god. Yep. I, I can't comprehend how stupid you are. Wait, wait, wait. God will take care of it. You know how? Everyone's going to die. There you go. <laughs> oh, you were literally damning us all. God will take care of it by allowing mother nature to kill off all humans. That's all right. Yeah, no, sure. 
Yep. I'll I'll go willingly. I'll become a druid so that way, like maybe when the earth gets rebuilt by like God rebuilding it, maybe I could be a tree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Sit in the sun all day, do absolutely nothing but just grow. Fuck yeah, dude. I wanna be a tree. Well, I have nothing else to say on this. Six. Trump exempts in exempts entire senior staff from White House ethics rules. This was submitted by damaged hells to our politics. There, this. Oh, you're not gonna fucking continue this one. I'm not. You did the fucking. This one has two on the thing. Oh, right? okay. The, yeah. Uh, Trump has also granted more lobbyist waivers in four months than Obama did in eight years. This was submitted by Civ Civ, Civ Reviber to our politics. Fuck that guy's name. So. Also, I really hate comparisons like that. I understand why they do them. It just makes one person look worse than the other, but it still irks me. Either way, it, it doesn't necessarily say a lot of what the fallout from this would be, and it's not all at once. These waivers have been issued over a course of time, and now there was a big bulk of them that did drop and were released to the public, exempting people like Kellyanne Conway as well as Steve Bannon. These waivers allow them to basically talk and work with whoever they want. In terms of Kellyanne Conway, it allows her to work with her previously employed consulting firm because normal ethics rules would bar her from doing so. Steve Bannon will be allowed to discuss and work alongside Breitbart, who he also used to work work for um, uh, <laughs> so they're, they're dude, free no no this is really bad that's going to be like the big propaganda news source so it allows them to just like talk to whoever they want however they want about whatever they want but they're still not allowed to essentially be biased towards them which i'm like uh sure you can say that but i don't believe you i don't like this one bit yeah you make yeah, me sad. No. Some Why more... is this happening? This entire, almost this entire list makes me sad. I, I don't know. Now, there are also on that other side of things, there's been a large number of lobbyist waivers that Trump has issued out. So basically, it's an interesting, like, I don't know, shadow game that Trump decided to play in that. So one of the things he did right at the beginning of his term on January 28th, he issued an executive order that strangled the ability for lobbyists to do anything or pre previous lobbyists to do anything in terms of working for people or working alongside people. But what he's been doing instead, he's like, haha, I strangled all you guys. And then the ones I like, I will offer a waiver so that you can continue doing whatever it is you were doing. So you have to buy your way into the White House. Or just get on Trump's good side. I don't like this. I think he's... I don't like this whatsoever. This sounds like an awful plan for democracy. It's... I, here's the thing. Is that it's not any different than how it was before. Like, the same players are now still... Now it's just legal. It, it was technically legal before. He just is making himself look better by saying, I did this thing, but I'm still going to let people do the things that they wanted to do beforehand as long as I say it's okay. Mm. I don't know about that. Uh, uh, yeah, I still, I still don't like this. This doesn't sound good to me. It's legal, though. It doesn't, that doesn't make, make it any better whatsoever. Well, you know what else doesn't make, any, it, make it any better, Nathan? Mm -mm. Praying. Five. Woman left with life-threatening heart condition after parents chose prayer over medical treatment. This was submitted by Tragic Donut to our news. So this 18... Guess what? What? This is a pre-existing condition. Of course it is. This woman was left permanently disabled. She was diagnosed at the age of 18 with a congenital heart disease, which means she has a hole in her heart. I have a friend who has that. And it causes severe problems for you forever unless you get it fixed. And the earlier you get it fixed, the better. Apparently, there was signs no, that her, it was... There was a different thing for her heart. Apparently, there were signs that this was going to be a problem for her at a very young age, but the parents chose to not do anything. When she got very, very ill, her parents, instead of getting her medical treatment, prayed over her, as well as the other eight children in the house. Oh, no. So they're like, that's all right. We don't need this one. I guess I don't know. God wills it. We have these other set, these other eight kids. Now the thing that they're looking for, though, is that she now that she's eight. Well, she's what twenty years old now. 
21 yeah. years old. She's 21 years old now. She is she she's looking to prosecute her parents. Like oh god, I would definitely press charges. Sorry mom, I know you're listening, but like if that was ever the case where you fucked me over like that for the rest of my life, I would come after you like a goddamn shark sensing blood in the water. Well, here's the problem though is in Idaho Luckily, we don't have that. Thanks mom. Well, Idaho can't in, in Idaho, parents can't be prosecuted for neglect if they refuse medical care because of their faith. Now, this girl is is going to attempt to persecute them anyway because they've basically condemned her. Sure. But it doesn't seem like it's going to get any traction because of that, right? Maybe there's so many loopholes in, in in the whole legal system, and they had discussed changing the law a few years back, and nothing ever came on it. So, I don't know. I wish her luck, though, because all of that just sucks. Oh, yeah, no, easily. That fucking blows. I'm sorry that this has happened to you, and I'm sorry that this happens to people in general. Yeah, so, um... Anywho, four. Brendan Fraser joins Donald Sutherland and Hillary Swank in FX's Trust. This is submitted by RV 1976 to our television. The Brendan. I'm so excited. I'm ex I fucking I I found out because I'm subscribed to R the Brendan. Yep. Or are you also subscribed to R Save Brendan? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Because Brendan Fraser's the bomb. I'm pretty sure there is also a petition that I had signed earlier to help Brendan Fraser out. I'm fairly certain I signed the same one because Brendan Fraser is a wonderful human being, a good actor, and I want to see him in more stuff even though he's kind of old and fat and washed up, but whatever. Whatever, dude. It's the same with Taylor Lautner. Let's get him back into movies. Who is Taylor Lautner? He was the werewolf in Twilight, but he was also a bunch of other shit. Like, he was Shark Boy in Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, I he remember. Like also... He was also, like, world champion for, like, Taekwondo or something. It was fucking crazy. He tried to break out of the Twilight thing with some random-ass action movie. Right, but it's hard to break out of the Twilight thing. Like, look who's still standing out of the Twilight thing. Uh, no exact one? Exactly. It's a very awkward quagmire. The, the supporting actors? Yeah, and even then, like, you're, you're just banking on hoping that you don't recognize them. Because if you recognize them, you're like, oh, God. Why? And yes, I have watched every single one of the Twilight movies. I even watched the last one in theaters. Uh, apparently the last thing that Taylor Lautner did was a TV series called Scream Queens. I wa I've only read, like, half of the book series. I've only read the first two. And that was last year. He also, yeah, did, no. he also did a movie called Run the Tide. Anna Kendrick was in Twilight. Man. Yeah, but Anna Kendrick was huge before Twilight. That's true. Like, was it? Yeah. Like the the thing is, is like Taylor Lautner, Vampire Boy, Kristen Stewart. They hadn't really had like big roles before Twilight. Oh my God! So after after Twilight, Robert Pattinson had a movie where it was about this guy who was down on his luck and he was like really just depressed because like. His life was just shitty. His dad was a piece of shit to him. His sister was neglected by his, his dad, not in like a physical way, but like a I'm ignoring you kind of way. And like he, he couldn't, he just, he was just pissed all the time. Um, but he found a girlfriend and his life started to look up and everything was going really well. And his dad started talking to his like sister because of it and everything. It was really good. And then he was going to get a job with his dad and he was going to meet him at, at, um, yeah, it was Remember Me. Sarah, uh, found it. Um, but he was going to meet his dad at his office, and it turns out that it was he met his dad in the office at 9-11, and it was at at the World Trade Center. Damn. And, like, I had no idea that it was going that way until the very end. It was a very good twist, in my opinion. I was like, Robert holy Pattinson shit. Robert Pattinson has five things coming out this year. High Life, Idol's Eye, Damsel, The Trap, and Good Time. Uh, I haven't heard of any of those. Kristen Stewart, uh, she has one thing coming out this year. It's called Lizzie, and one thing coming out next year called Underwater. Um, oh, I agree with Kirsten. That movie was pretty good. I do recommend it. 
Like, there's one spot that you could have possibly guessed it, and it was like they were watching American Pie when it was in theaters. I don't see anything else I even somewhat recognize for either of them. Oh, well, whatever. They, they, As long as they're not stupid, they made good enough money on Twilight and are probably still making decent enough money on Twilight that they'll still be Or there be okay. other things that they've been in. Yeah, they'll be fine. Mm -hmm. As long as they just don't be stupid. But that's right. kind of, you know, true for life, so. Three. Here's, I was going to say, here's hoping Brendan Fraser gets a cameo in The Mummy and sequential, sequ or later Mummies, blah. It'd be cool if he played a role somewhat like what I expect uh, Harrison Ford to play in the new Blade Runner, where he's, you know, like the previous dude that has something to offer the new guy. Sure, that would be all right, I guess. That just means that it puts the previous three Mummy movies into the cinematic universe, which would fucking absolutely make me happy. Anyway, yeah. United States Air Force veteran gets 35 years prison for trying to join ISIS. This was submitted by Snows Nothing <laughs> to our news. If you're showing signs of joining the bad guys, we will Snows, find you. Snows Nothing, that's good. Yeah. Anywho, there's not a lot more to say past that because the FBI had a tip off on him, tracked him, planted a dude to intercept him, intercepted him. He was caught, charged, indicted, going to jail for probably the rest of his life he's in his he's in his late 40s so he's gonna get out in his what 80s? late 70s early 80s maybe if he's lucky well there's also probation that can be gotten there but i mean hopefully by the time he i, I don't know i don't i don't know i mean it, it, it's scary when there's someone that wants to join such a radical group because even if they because like the, my brain went, well, maybe you can keep him in there until the Islamic State is no longer a thing. But my brain goes, yeah, but he's still crazy. So <laughs> you let him out and he could still do crazy shit. That's understandable. You're hoping that breaking the, the enemy will demoralize him to the point where he doesn't. Well, when you take away a lot of someone's life. Yeah. Also say, no, that's bad. Don't do that. Or we'll do this again. Yeah, well, then, then... Hopefully it works. My concern is just then they go on a, a suicide rampage of some kind. Sure. They're just like, fuck it. I don't want to go back. I don't want to hear... I don't want to be here. Two. I understand. Sean Spicer. White House is no longer taking questions on Trump and Russia. This is submitted by one to cut one to Kafour to our world news. Terribly written. I hope they I hope they keep sitting there and and asking those same questions over and over again. Anyways, well, it's not that you can't ask the questions. It's that the White House is no longer going to be answering them. Instead, they're going to be referred to outside counsel Mark Kasowitz. Kasowitz is Trump's longtime lawyer and has re represented him in property deals, divorce cases, and fraud allegations. He's had plenty of those. <laughs> Well, yeah, and th this is the dude that worked on all of those cases. So, and this is specifically Trump and Russia, like the Trump and the Russia connection, the probe investigation, what did or didn't happen. They'll still answer questions about like foreign relations with Russia or, you know, questions about Trump. It's just the Trump campaign connection to Russia. They are not going to, they, 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 they no go anymore. They don't care. They're just like, hey, talk to that guy. They, they want to focus on the president's agenda and going forward. So it's like all you're talking about is what has happened. If you want to talk about what has happened in the past or potentially happened in the past, go talk to the lawyer over there. We are going to focus on what's happening now and what's happening tomorrow. I'm the guy that knows how to talk discreetly. Well, I also feel like it's somewhat understandable. Like the press conferences from the White House that Sean Spicer holds are supposed to be things about what's happening now, like what we're going to talk about next and stuff like that. The Trump-Russia investigation, while very important and is needs to be con conducted and will continue to be so, we have other things that we need. Because what, what's the White House going to tell you? Be like, oh, well, you finally asked 37 times, so now we'll tell you the truth. No, they're going to just be like, okay, no, that question's not important. Shove it off to the side, and we're going to talk about other things that are happening now, which makes sense. Like... Don't come with the same question every day expecting a different don't, answer. Don't beat a dead horse. Yeah, I mean... Even though it's not really quite dead. Or Don't a, beat a dying horse. It's not even a horse either. 
It's a country. Whatever. One. Trump withdrawing the United States from Paris Climate Agreement. All right. This was submitted by Watts, Watkins Joe to our news. Keep going. White House tells supporters it will ex exit the Paris deal. This was submitted by Provo King to Our World News. Before this decision happened, a couple other things happened in that China told Donald Trump that it is an international responsibility to act over climate change. This was submitted by IMZ35 to Our World News. As well as Facebook and Apple urged Donald Trump not to pull out of the Paris Agreement. 25 companies, including those, signed a letter imploring Mr. Trump not to exit the 2015 Paris Climate Accord. This was submitted by Mavia to our Futurology. And as a result of that, Elon Musk has left all presidential councils. This was submitted by Suicide and Redemption to our Elon Musk. So everyone, basically across the world, was like, Trump, don't pull the United States out of the, cl out of the Paris Climate Agreement. He's don't like, don't fucking do it. He's like, you know what? I think I'm going to pull out of the climate. Now my brain's just thinking of Zeus. Hey, Zeus, don't put your dick in that. Up too late. Like, shut up. I'll put my dick where I want. I'm motherfucking Zeus. That's his exact mindset. So China told him, hey, don't do this. You signed on the same time we did in September of 2015. 25 massive U.S. companies, including Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, all told Trump, no, don't pull out of the Paris Climate Agreement. And Trump pulled out anyway. Now, what he did say, he's like, the Paris Climate Agreement in its current state is a, a financial loss and nothing but a burden for the United States. I am willing to rejoin the Paris Agreement under new negotiations that are less harmful to the United States economy. I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure that... That... All right, keep talking. Hold on. I have to find the thing that I read earlier. So it's not that he isn't open to the Paris Agreement. Under its previous language, he wasn't down for it. He wasn't He wasn't going for it because it, it did put a very large financial stress on the United States. Because of the goal and because of the things that would need to be implemented, we would have to spend a lot of money in a lot of different places to help actually – spur on the Paris Agreement to make it happen the way that it was designed. And while, I mean, the United States is the richest country in the world, and while we're in debt up to our eyeballs, I mean, we got a lot more debt that we can slather on. But, yeah. So, he's like, I will agree to it if it is less of a negative blow to America. In which he's already looking at making renegotiations so that he feels he gets a better deal for the United States. He, he, he was talking about um, bre breaking out because of coal. And that's just a dying field that should not be ever tried to be restarted. Well, and he's, he, he will come to terms with that eventually. Like, that's just going to happen. It, it, he, it, the, the signs are on the wall on that one. Coal's not going to just turn off, but it's already becoming heavily automated. A lot of the people that lost their jobs in the coal industry, there's no jobs to go back to. I can't find it, but there's this comment that refuted every single one of his um, arguments towards it, and I, I can't find it. Well, I, I don't know, but that's what he presented. And on one case, I do understand because... When you presented yourself on the platform that you would help bring money back to America and help try to solve the debt instead of just building on it, the Paris Agreement was a big expense. A very important one, though. Like, that's the thing, is that the world, the climate change, global warming is a very important thing to address. So hopefully renegotiations to the, to the Paris Climate Agreement are conducted quickly. I feel like this was more out of spite for the, the previous administration. And maybe it was. It doesn't matter anymore because it, it is not a crime to do things out of spite. That's understandable. And but still, like it's really fucking petty. Here's the other thing, though, is that it, it will show Trump just how bad of an idea it was because he's getting immense backlash from everyone. That's okay. I read somewhere that it wouldn't actually really be in effect until, like, 2020, in which case we can still outvote it. Uh, what, the the withdrawal? Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Things in world government, like, things in government work very slowly. Things in world government work even slower. Oh, yeah. 
outside of crisis times where bad things happen. You have to really fucking really be paying attention. Now, as one of the very first things that came from this is Elon Musk warned, warned the White House that if Trump pulls out of the Paris Agreement, I'm done. If you guys aren't going to listen to the advisors that say this is a bad idea, I'm done. I'm leaving. And they pulled out and he said, cool, I'm leaving. So good on you for keeping your word, Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. No, that's fucking sick. Anyway. I'm, I'm really glad that he was he's fucking he followed through with what he said. Nathan, what did you care about in the last 24 hours? All right, I don't know. I haven't actually watched the thing because there's a video of it. Okay. I don't know if he's being, like, really, like, trollish in nature. But Vladimir Putin has suggested patriotic Russian citizens might be engaged in hacking. What? <laughs> Such individuals might be joining, quote, the justified fight against those speaking ill of Russia, end quote. Okay. So he's saying, we have hackers, but they're not officially on the government register. Yeah, he, he, he denied, once again, that his administration hacked the U.S. election last year. And he says that activity has never been carried out at the government level. And he exp expressed his belief that hackers could not influence voters' minds. But... Patriotic Russians are definitely fucking hacking. I got nothing. <coughs> Nathan? Yeah? How, well, I just realized that the H in post show is capitalized. That's not what I care about in the last 24 hours, but that is a failing on my part. How did you? How have you felt this last week, sir? These last uh, I felt pretty, pretty good because I've been... Having longer times before I go to sleep so I can binge more shows. You, you like in the, the 6 o'clock time frame? Yeah, it's pretty great. Cool. Actually, I would kind of... I, I, I like it, um, but I feel so rushed after getting home because I get home at, at 5.45. Um, I usually have to, like... With the computer downstairs being all fucked up, I would have to take my computer from downstairs upstairs. So, like... 6.30 would probably benefit me more, but I could definitely do 6 o'clock. Yeah, 6 has been good yeah. on my end, too. It allows me to, like, get home, get stuff set up and running and change over stuff for the new episode. Realize I didn't make the thumbnail, but that's okay. I, I can do it before I upload it to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, though, uh, so far, I enjoyed 6 o'clock. Uh, everybody, if, if let, let us know if you do watch the live stream to tell us your thoughts on 6 o'clock versus 9 o'clock. We do do it three hours earlier now. Live stream is at 6 p.m. Alaska time, 7 p.m. if you're on the West Coast, 10 p.m. if you're on the East Coast. If that's a better time for you. I have seen a decent number of – an increased number of viewers on the live stream. So that's nice. I hope that it is reaching more people and that you are enjoying the show. If you are enjoying the show, as I transition to leaving the show and turning this thing off, because apparently I'm going to go hang out with Josh and Davina for some food stuffs. So long, farewell. Um, Auf Wiedersehen, goodbye. You can support us financially at patreon.com slash daily internet or follow and share us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all of which are at iRedicast. If you want to take the show with you, you can download it on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, any of the podcaster that you might have. You can also catch the VODs on Facebook and YouTube, whichever one you prefer. Yeah, the show's out there. If you want to send us feedback or send us something you'd like us to talk about, send us an email to our inbox, which is feedback.iredit at gmail.com, or call and leave us a voicemail at 508-738-2278. That is your 298th dose of the internet. We will have episode 300 next week. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Still don't know what we're doing. Secret, secret, secret. Hey, there is no secret. We literally have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> but, uh, Dude, that's how I live my life. But everybody... It is Thursday. It means we will not have a show again until Monday. So with that said, go off, have a good time, be safe this weekend, and please remember... Don't get don't get have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh.